Hello. Hey, everybody. It's Thursday, which means it's Dungeon Discourse Day. Dude, the consistency, by the way, because we've tried Dungeon Discourse <laughs> in the past, and it would always last like a couple weeks, and then we're like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we've been doing the damn thing, dude, and I'm proud of us. We're we killing We have it. indeed been doing the thing. We've been doing the thing. <laughs> Um, welcome everybody to the Discourse. Today we have Laura and Ethan to talk about the previous episode, and they're going to collaborate on making a D&D &D character, and that oh means boy. we'll have all three characters complete. So that means that after the stream today, a poll will go up, I'll post it on Twitter, I'll post it uh, in the, uh, the, the Level Select Discord, with uh, a link to where you can vote, as well as uh, the D&D &D Beyond links, so you can kind of look at the sheets and... Uh, read the like backstories a little bit that, that, that the players have come up with to uh, properly make your vote. And uh, the winner of that poll that the community decides will uh, become an actual NPC in the campaign somewhere. That's going to be exciting. Cool. It's going to be exciting. Um, before we leave off, Ethan, I actually have a question for you. Hello. With the Halloween one shot, mm. how much effort would it be if we take the dungeon select overlays and add some like spooky, you know, blood splatter and like you know, make it make it horrified a little bit for the Halloween one shot. Easy enough. All right, would you be down to do that? Are we, are we being spooky? We're being spooky, boys. I mean, it's a horror. It's like a it's a Halloween like horror-y one shot. So I figured maybe having some some like some like horror elements to the overlay would be a fun. I mean, a fun I'm touch, I'm literally right? gonna have blood on my face for nice. it. Watch so. me, <laughs> watch me get hyper fixated on it, go over the top, and then suddenly have it like to the point where. <laughs> oh, in the starting screen, there's lightning flashing. Every time it flashes, a shadow appears. You know, dumb shit I like mean, that. I mean, you can go as crazy as you want. Like, I, don't, I, I, was just, I was just wondering, would that be something you you, you would be oh, able yeah. to do? Nice. Cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um. So, today, episode 10 of Dungeon Discourse. We're going to be talking about the last episode, as always. Uh, we have a question submitted as well for y'all to answer and obviously chat and players if you have any questions for me regarding the campaign so far of the last episode or anything feel free to ask always we have two questions on twitter by the way that's so exciting two questions on twitter two. Oh shit two whole questions i only saw one wait a second hold on hold on one man. of them just happened 37 seconds ago so oh, 43 <laughs> seconds ago actually <laughs> Actually, dude, y'all, a nerge? Oh, we don't have nerge in fucking Dungeon Select uh, ch uh, turned on. Frick. Oh, now it's three questions. That's the one that was in there. Nice. Hell yeah. Dope. Love that. Love that for us. Um, I'll make it happen. Yeah, wait, are, are you a BTTV, like, editor uh, for the channel, Duke? I, I forgot. But if you do, if you are, like, <laughs> nerge is my new favorite fucking emote. It's, it's the fucking best. It's, like, adjusts glasses... Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Um, before we do anything, uh, a little recap of the last session. You guys traveled the last day thanks to uh, some help of, of Jax and his... Uh, just, like, dude, this guy pulls a new fucking trinket out of his ass every fucking week, <laughs> I feel like, and does things with it. He's, he's used this trinket before, but uh, yeah. it's fucking cool, man. Artificers, like, the way he plays his artificer is really fucking cool, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but with the help of, of his uh, map case, managed to cut the travel time in half. So instead of two days of travel, it only took you one day to get to Eldilon. Um, you traveled past uh, a farm belonging to the Flanders family. Uh, and you saw it being set on fire. And you saw the, 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 the group of people doing it flee into the woods. Which caused the party to split for the first time. And boy, uh, <laughs> part of the party... Ended Ooh. up in a fight that was balanced for the full uh, six of you. Should have killed him. I could have. <laughs> Should have. Very, very well could have. But I decided, Learning you experience. know what, dude? I'm going to not. Because, <laughs> like... I if, am a benevolent uh, god. Literally. I was like, dude, if I go in full force with this fight and have them fight you at their full potential, you would not have survived. Period. <laughs> so... Uh, my PayPal is linked to my Twitch page if you want to thank me. Um, yep. <clears throat> anyway. I mean, I, I, I would have noped out of the fight depending on which of us were there. Like, if it had been Davian and anyone else, but Kes was there, so I wasn't going to nope okay, out. Dude. I would have just, right, just been there. <laughs> um, after taking care of the culprits, leaving one alive to turn in to the guards in Eldilon, uh, the other half of the party 
rescued a young boy from the from the house, <clears throat> um, saving him and reuniting him with uh, his uh, mothers, who were visiting neighbors down the road uh, at the time. And it all ended up, you know, besides their house burning down, it, you know, as it ended up as as good as it could have ended up, I, I'd say. Um, you then made your way to Eldalon, uh, got rewarded for a job well done regarding the whole yuan Ti threat, mm -hmm. got yourselves your first magic items to, to Dude, use from here on I'm out. I'm excited if I ever have spare money to throw at the artist to update the character art now and add just some sick dragon silver bracelet snaking up my <laughs> arm to the character art, because that'd nice. be cool. But... If Dutch kills me off, the party loses Onu when the campaign ends. I mean... Oh, I, can keep, I can keep Onu around. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like for a minute the biggest threat to Onu sticking around was Davian, because Davian True, was making Onu dude, real Davian sad. Such a cock to Onu. Holy shit. <laughs> he was, I Imagine, was like, Onu's dude, gonna leave. Duke rolling like shit and blaming the bird in RP. That's fucked up, dude. That's fucked up. It's hilarious, though. It's funny, it but it's so fucked funny. up at the same time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and oh. after that, um, Siren and Lazarin had a cute little dinner date while the rest of you guys ended up Drinking at the muddy boat and ending up in a proper bar fight. God. Uh, which was funny as fuck. It was, <laughs> it was, a, it was a good time. And uh, for the next few days, nothing really set in stone, plans wise. Siren, um, you met the you met the inter the entire city council. Uh, the council consisting of uh, Tranliel, General Kron, Father Ackle, Captain Blackpaw. Primus Dalashtari. And someone out of character you all know, Peter Riz. Who now Yeah, we do. Who now runs the Kalzir's Adventurers, which is an offshoot of the Heroes of Exile that 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 made their way to the new continent and kind of started like a like a sub guild there. Still part of the Heroes of Exile, like as a guild, but just like a s like an offshoot. Um an offshoot branch, I would suppose. Uh you met his son earlier on in the campaign as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I forget exactly where it was, but I'm, uh, was he... He was captain of the guard in Southwold, was he not? I think. I think so. I think so, because he was the one that let you in. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's captain of the guard in Southwold. He let you in to question the dragonborn that they have in captivity. Right, I remember now. Uh, this is a problem with being a DM and being overprepared. I have so many NPCs that I forget where I fucking place them all sometimes. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it seems that Peter Riz has, has done well for himself over the over the last few, uh, you know, the last few decades. Still, you know, a, a gray fox now, but still, you know, a fucking badass. And that was uh, pretty much where we left it off. So, first things first. What do you think of last episode? What do you think of last session? Any, any, any comments, questions from, from your end? I, I felt really bad for monopolizing so much as being part of the group the, the group that took on the fight for taking so the other three are just like we're coming <laughs> we're coming <laughs> yeah that was, that was I mean scary. I definitely I definitely in my head thought it was like oh even though you said things like they're like a, half a mile away and like things like that in my head it was like we'll like stall for a few rounds and then they'll join in the second half no, no. <laughs> I did the math, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they were I think some I think you at some point said like two and a half thousand feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two Which, and a half thousand feet. Um, I did the math on it, right? Because we've all got different movement speeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh Diagon's Um I pinned it because I was just so intrigued by this calculation. I, th I think, so I did the calculation with yours, forgetting that you need to stay still after using feline and agility. Yeah, I also forgot that part. <laughs> so, so the horses, uh, to cover that amount of distance, take two minutes and 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. It takes about three minutes for Brooks, uh, I think Dagon would be about 10, 15 seconds faster. And then... It takes four minutes and nearly 20 seconds for the normal 30-foot movement, boys. So, even with that a 10-foot movement bonus, I would have got there a whole minute earlier than them. But, like, two minutes in combat... Is forever. Is, that's, uh, you know, that, that's like 200 rounds or something. Bearing in mind that most of our combats are over around in 30 a, Around a six seconds, so yeah, do the math. Like. Yeah, I mean, most <laughs> combats end in, like, five to ten turns, right? So 30 seconds yeah. to a minute. 
and you know, like yeah, like the early death game saving the early, throws. Early game combat lasts even shorter than that on average, to be honest. Yeah. Death saving throws if you're unconscious but not stable, eighteen seconds. You know, like it. It's not a good time. By the time we get there, you're either victorious or dead. Yeah. But um. But also the reason yeah. it happened was because like I. In character, I didn't know that that's what Davy was like. like. I didn't know what Davy had seen. He didn't tell. He didn't say anything to the group because he was just worried about will we catch them? And we didn't know that they were gonna maybe like take ten minutes to draw a teleportation circle. He's just like they're gonna get away. And all he said was like, "Look at group picks when he's like, you come with me." I didn't know we were gonna. He didn't say <laughs> we're gonna go fight some people. So like, if if there had been more time to assess the situation, I'm sure all of us would have done something different. But we were just reacting to only one person had this information. Mm -hmm. that we were all kind of acting on and it just it just happened and then the reason oh. we were able to pull the kess thing because kess kess and i in because we're the pair that have known each other the longest in the party mm -hmm. we've had a year and a half of traveling together before the campaign started and we came up with a few specific like adventures we've done in that year and a half rather than just vague we've we've been around you know and one of them is an homage to a book series bell and i love and it involves like um two thieves like stealing world famous very expensive horses and it involves maneuvers where they do have to like one grabs the other flips them on the back of a horse they're on one horse and they swap so like that whole thing i was like we've done this we've done this before dutch let me do this and he i did, did so it was i did <laughs> smile uh yeah and you went to the combats and they were like like fifth level wizards with uh nice. like they were strong <laughs> they were squishy but they, they were squishy because they're wizards but they yeah. have access to some powerful spells for 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 your level, and like that fight was full on like like tweaked for uh like the full group to encounter. So when that happened, I was like, okay, like in my mind, it was like, okay, I could punish them here for splitting the party, uh, and probably kill all three of them. <laughs> but I just did not want to deal with like half the party dying. So I was I I like nerfed them. I made it so that they wouldn't all just blast you with fireball, fireball at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, which makes sense thematically because they were cocky because they outnumbered them. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I would write it off. But, I guess. But like in reality, it was just it was it was me looking out for you all. <laughs> yeah. I figured I would have been fine. I figured you were gonna you were gonna put one of us down for sure, and I think you still maybe were intending to get one, but then you just had bad luck with rolls and then we had some good luck with rolls so you couldn't even do that but, but that logic even with all of us they blast us with three fireballs yes but it w would have been spread around the entire group they would have targeted... because we would have been more spread out too yeah. they they would have, you know what i mean like there. they would have they would, they would have used more fireballs but it's, it's not, unlikely not that you hit all to us. nuke the same like two or three people yeah but uh look because there will be a few of you in melee with them so they wouldn't fireball themselves um, yeah, actually, they that, could have because they have those potions that make them immune to fire yeah. damage. They could have, but then they would have had to spend their time unless they'd already drank them. Uh, no, they hadn't. They had them on them. They, 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 sorry, okay. they hadn't drank them yet. But like, I, I obviously they could have very easily. But the chances of of you all surviving with them all using fireball when it's all of you. We're very likely. We're very likely. Okay, what's what's the damage die? What level were they casting fireball? Third. Third. Okay, so third level. It's 86, I believe. Something 86, there. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the average, so average would be roll... 24. And they're, it's deck save, so like the okay. odds of you guys, right. or the majority of you guys only taking half damage are also very likely. Also yeah, very likely. Yeah, we're a fairly dexy part. Yeah. So it'd be 28 average. How many of them were there? Four. Four. Uh, they would have to at, at least I would have to fail at least three of the saving throws I think if they got average damage to go down. Yeah, so like, but the, that's you because you have fire resistance, don't you? Because of yeah, but who like, knows? Regardless, regardless, <laughs> True, with, the, with be keeping color. in mind that half damage is very likely because of deck saves and half the party being fucking insane at decks. Like, <laughs> you're a monk, you have good decks. Uh, I think Ethan's decks is also pretty good, even though he's like a strength Yeah, yeah we, we have a ranger, two monks, a and ranger. then Kess also happens to be fairly dexy. Kess for is very, I think the only one that would have really been in trouble when it comes to deck Jax. saves is Jax. Yeah. But then so, Jax sort of knows that and doesn't tend to put himself in those situations. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I think 
balance wise it would have been fine for all of you but i had to like really tweak it like on the fly because of the fact that you guys split up and i didn't want to fucking kill off half the party <laughs> Because um. also then we need to remake the overlay, the starting suits. I mean that wasn't even. The oh, if, if, like, you, if you kill off the people for the sake at once. of storytelling and stuff, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to punish them for splitting the party. Uh, the, 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 you know what I mean? If you kill off three people, like, at and once, I, it's not like I fudged. And it's not like I fudged draws or anything. It was more like I'm just not going to let them all use yeah. their most powerful fucking hey, shit. I mean, yeah. maybe some of them were weak the members dice of the cult. Also, were very kind to you because I rolled like ass that entire fight. Damage wise. Yeah, there was one time you rolled three ones on an attack on me, and yeah. I was like, thank fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was fucking. I, I rolled some shitty fucking damage, so I guess I guess fate also wants you guys to survive. Um. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine, right? Duke rolled a natural 20, but then rolled like a one and a two on the damage dice or some shit, yeah. <laughs> that was wild, but um, yeah. That was, uh, that was, that was like definitely the most interesting thing that happened there, and fucking the most scary thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, reuniting young Timothy with his mums. Very cute. Honestly, hmm? That fight that fight was really like Okay, so from like an out of character perspective, like little sad I missed out on combat, but like it happens, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a collaborative game. There are sessions where some people have the limelight more than others. Mm -hmm. I know that I have a character that is a dickhead and therefore puts himself <laughs> forward more. Yeah. So you know, it you know, it is what it is. Um in character Brooks is a bit like, my god, they're all gonna die. It's <laughs> <laughs> like they're fucking idiots. Um, Hunter is saying that another option might have been for one of them to continue the circle. Uh, teleportation circle is a one minute cast time. See, one of them would have been busy for 10 rounds, finishing, or like nine rounds, I guess, finishing the teleportation circle and knew that he would not survive that. So he wouldn't have, yeah. like, they wouldn't have done that. Simple yeah, as that. Yeah. I mean, they didn't survive anyway. Like, uh -huh. I mean, one of them did. One of them did. Not from. Mm, I'm waiting for him to do the old like cyanide capsule in the tooth. Uh, also, my favorite <clears> note from the session. Definitely, definitely becoming clear is that that this Lord Fire F Fear Krog is becoming more and more of a threat. You know, it, him and his boys are, are causing a lot more trouble than they than they used to, and that's uh, an interesting fucking like plot like story point for you guys to tackle at one point or another. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time um my favorite note in my notebook from the whole session if it'll see is this one right here boy has lesbian moms i got very excited uh, uh when he when he mentioned his two moms i was like lebean moms <laughs> yeah, i made sure to write yeah. down their names because they are important now they are <laughs> they are gay NPCs. therefore they are important <laughs> <laughs> is that how it works <laughs> Any NPC that isn't straight is automatically, like, somehow plot important. In my mind. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's fucking... We've had... We've, we've, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's a fantasy world, but I feel like homosexuality is still very much a thing that could happen, so I'm, fuck it. Like, every once in a while, I'll sprinkle some of that in there, you know? Hell yeah. Be inclusive. Hell yeah. At the end of the day, like, it, it happens in the real world. Why wouldn't it happen yeah, in the exactly. fantasy world? Exactly. If your fantasy world only has straight relationships, <laughs> that's a little... Can't kill them because you get called homophobic. <laughs> True! <laughs> Man, that's why they... That's why they weren't... That's why they weren't in the house, but the kid was. True. <laughs> yeah, that's why they weren't in the house when the fucking place got burned down. <laughs> you fucking figured me out, dude. The, these four <laughs> dragon... These these four arsonists, they're like, gotta wait till they leave, or Gotta wait till the lesbians crime. leave. Yeah, gotta wait till they leave, or else it's, it's a It's no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll kill kids, no problem, but the gays... <laughs> can't, can't touch those, because we're getting in a lot of trouble. Killing children, though, that's fine. But also, imagine <laughs> if we just were going down the road, and we just see them rushing back to get their kids... And we're all just like, oh, we fucked up. Like there was, we left a we kid in there. Up. Yikes! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuck. They're like, did you see our kid. son? And we're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. Um. Anyway. <laughs> oh boy. I both love and hate this community at the same time, and I've never been this conflicted about feelings ever. Um. I have a question. Uh. For for you two. Uh, Hello. We th th there's there's this, you know two very obvious plot points that could be pursued. Mm -hmm. uh, next, obviously, Davian has been pushing uh, the whole tier the situation, tiers. and then there's obviously uh, <laughs> uh, there's obviously these 
the, these arsonists that are becoming more and more of an issue and setting fires more and more frequently. Less and less time between fires uh, every time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything, Duke. I'm not going to tell <laughs> you. <laughs> Surprise. He has both of them. There actually. is. I mean, thematically, <laughs> the ultimate, the like, ultimate. what I'll say is thematically, it could be very much possible, right? Fireman wants fire gem. I don't know. Maybe. But he the would want fire gem. He wouldn't have another one because Duke, the one Duke has is fire gem. So we're Maybe looking for other fire things jam. now. Maybe. Um, yeah, they're all fire gems. They're all like the same thing. Oh, oh it's for just some reason th I thought there was like they a make, fire, they make a earth, hole. a water, no. blah, blah, blah. No, no they're all fire gems. They just make a hole. Okay. Like they're yeah, three like parts of the same thing. gemstone, pretty much. Um, So, I mean, thematically, good, good do. I mean, realistically, it's the ultimate railroad, right? Like, <laughs> doesn't matter which way you go, it leads to a tear. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> um, well, like the thing is, the thing with like Davian's backstory in particular, or this is, I, I want to like kind of not railroad, but have but that be done early plot. because it's crucial to it's Duke's character. leveling up uh, uh... curve, so to say. Yeah, I, we've discussed you know it I mean? a little. Where like we know, I don't know <clears> if, <throat> if the general public know, but like we know what he wants to do with that, and obviously. Yeah, you know, out of character, we all want to facilitate that. No, it doesn't have to be done early, but like, I, it's because of the way like Duke's Duke's made this character with a multi class in mind. So I want to present him with an opportunity the as opportunity. early as possible, so that you know what I mean. Um, so I, I wouldn't call it railroady per se, but like, there's a reason yeah. why there's a heavy fire theme to the next obvious plot hook. You know, it's not <laughs> railroady. We can go do what we want. It's just that you're gonna then build that around whatever we choose um, rather yes than and, just I mean, leaving yes and it. No. Yes and no. Um, like, realistically, and this is just like a look, a peek behind the DM screen, I guess. There's two yeah. gems left, which means that I could, I could put in those gems in whatever plot hook I want. Uh, so I have the freedom to be like, oh, the party's going to do this. Okay, time for me to figure out how I'm going to implement a gem in that scenario, yeah. right? And that is yeah. very, li that is, that is kind of how I'm doing it, yeah. <clears throat> this is where we just surprise and Cass and I decide to railroad y'all into doing a potential plot hook that we have, and then Dutch has a fun time fitting a gem into that. Because <laughs> that's going to be a hot mess whenever it happens. I'm like, as a, at Laura's looking forward to it, but no, in, in, in character, I'm like, we'll avoid that for as long as we possibly can. That's, when, when that comes up, that's going to be fucking cool, dude. It's going to be fucking cool. <laughs> We're pretending because it doesn't like, exist it's, right it's, now. It's a baddie that I have canonized in Dungeon Select, yeah. like in, in previous campaign, but never really. Yeah. Like, his never his name on. came up once, and yeah. that's it. Oh, but like that's not he good. exists out there. He's out there. Um, so I'm looking. For, I, I'm, this gonna be, like whenever the fuck that is gonna happen, it's gonna be fucking sick. And I'm looking forward to it, but um. It's probably wise if we hold off that for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Um, uh, or not. You know, fuck it. <laughs> nah, Jesus, dude. take the wheel. Fuck it, dude. Easy campaign. Die at level three. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Hell yeah. Ugh. I need uh, to get if we cool TPK, like, shit. if we TPK, do we continue the campaign as a new party or just like, is that just it? Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> um. I haven't really put any thought into that, so let's just make sure that that doesn't happen for a while, yeah? Because <laughs> if that happens, I'm going to need, like, a full month figuring my fucking life out. A month out. of prep. Alright, if everyone <sighs> else dies, we'll have Daigon run away at the speed of light, and then the next campaign is Daigon silently mm -hmm. trying to recruit everyone. people. <laughs> Be a tragic waste of the world if we just move on? Yeah, absolutely. Like, the world is there, and... Like, campaign two, like... It, say... Say there is this, like super tragic early tpk which i don't think will happen but say it does we'll figure it out we'll figure it out we always do it'll be now. it it'll be it <clears throat> but uh let's just let's just hope for that you know i'm, I'm <laughs> manifesting that we won't have to figure that out yeah let's just not make <laughs> dumb choices that's all you know um, Easier said than but anyway uh we have some questions on the twitter for y'all uh, that we're going to quickly address. 
hold on. Let me quickly grab my Twitter here. Um, Katie oh, submitted a question. Um, big up. Big up for the question. Um, I know y'all have been excited about the various reveals that happened in this episode. And I feel like just in the campaign in general, there's been a lot of, like, backstory reveals here and there. Um... Did they happen how you expected, and uh, did meta-knowledge of certain things help or hinder the experience? You want to go first, or you want me to go first? I mean, I feel like a lot of it was a, just a, maybe, me, me, for me, I think meta-knowledge hindered, but not in the normal way of it's like, I already knew that, spoilers, I forgot. I forgot until the end of the episode that we, we, that we knew who Peter was, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, <laughs> And and things like that. Like to me, the biggest like ooh like drop of the yeah, episode Peter was like the homie was... back in back in Kelsey. Uh, I know. Fucked up. That's I just fucked loved up. it. Okay, that's fucked um, up, dude. How could you well, forget? Well, part Peter? of it was I kept forgetting him because then also K Kisarin had a that he's like Petar Berg. Then I kept confusing the two of them for a long time because Peter is Petar Berg, very mm -hmm. similar. And I I kept forgetting that. But for me, the biggest thing was the Jax <laughs> talking about this famous pirate lady he may or may Vera. not have been on the crew of and stuff and i was like oh this is interesting but i'm not there character's not there <laughs> to be sad but out of character i thought that for me that was the biggest kind of like like drop of the of the episode i also thoroughly enjoyed the brooks and kess conversation a lot I also feel like like meta knowledge. I don't think y'all really have a lot of meta knowledge about each other's backstories, no. right? So like I a think... lot of the reveals are pretty like like are surprise to you as well as your characters like in, in i think most everyone has cases. a lot of meta knowledge about one or two people but nobody knows like the group mm -hmm. yeah like i know a little bit about Jax from session one i know more about Cass because me and bell did a lot of like character creation at the same time bounced ideas mm -hmm. but then i don't <laughs> think that ever really hinders because even if you know it you don't know if they've changed it there's also that excitement mm -hmm. of seeing everyone else react to it yeah. Um, on top of that, I think we're all we're all sensible enough that like meta knowledge doesn't really come into it. You know, there have been reveals where like it's like, oh, I knew that out of character, or I'd figured that out at that point. Yeah. But it doesn't really come out or come across mm -hmm. mid session. It's, yeah. You know. I also liked the reveal because for long I thought because of course just because of overlay and like group chats and spoilers like we knew Brooks is a tiefling or at least a partial tiefling but our characters <laughs> don't. I always assumed there was some sort of illusionary like you know you looked full tiefling under that and the character art isn't what you look like but clearly it's not. You're like no I just physically altered my appearance to hide the more tiefling things and you're just a more subtle looking like you don't have like the colorful skin per se or at least maybe you do and I still don't know but the impression it seemed like after that last episode is I had tiefling horns and I just pulled a hellboy and got rid of them to make my life easier. Yeah, so with that, um, I was looking through subclasses of tieflings because like, I don't want to play like a basic bitch tiefling. Mm -hmm. I want to play. And I was like, I'm not going to hide this from everyone out of character. Like, they've all known that I've been discussing playing a tiefling for a while. Even though Duke apparently forgot. Um... That's why we didn't change the overlays, because out of character, everyone knew that I'd been thinking about it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but the subclass of tiefling I picked uh, is uh, the Glacier subrace, which is around deception and illusion magic and <coughs> charisma, being deceptive, being charming, being the sort of, mm -hmm. not just tiefling, but fiendish influence in general of like, twisting the way that people perceive things so i was like okay it makes sense to me because obviously tieflings appearances aren't all the same they're based mm -hmm. on like where they come from i was yeah. like it makes sense to me that tieflings of a sub race around disguising yourself would be a human passing for the most part so you know brooks doesn't have a really fancy skin color his eyes are fairly normal his he doesn't have a tail <clears throat> But then he does have horns. And then there are other ways in that it, you know, in that his nature manifests. Some of which I've covered, some of which yeah. you'll have to find out. Cool. BRB, don't do my questions yet. Thank you. Oh, that's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, was, there was a second part of this question, right? 
It was just the, uh, how, oh, just the, how did we also feel right? about the reveals? Yeah, in like general. how did you feel about the, the the reveals? Like in what were your thoughts? Because okay. the big reveals, other than Peter showing up, and then Jax did a backstory kind of drop, and then I guess your conversation with Kess also had some. So those are, I guess, the three big ones. I think we also had we also had a couple last week as well that were like, ooh. We had the last. I want to say the last couple of weeks, but the entire session, like, everyone's just sprinkling bits of backstory in here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like anyone's being, like, super shady with it, but it also doesn't feel like anyone's like, okay, here's yeah. my story from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, there's so much shit going on. All the fucking whispers, you know, like... There's been a lot of that, yeah. All the whispers, and then, like, Daigon... Daigon starting to make, like, a journal <laughs> with, like, frequently asked questions. I still need to write- I still need to write those and put them on World Animal. But, like, that's- that's so exciting because there's so many things that we can now ask in character and get answers to. Fucking- uh, Bell completely screwed over one of my plans. Which like, was? Uh, the, the week before- not last session, the one before. She's like, just so you know, Kess is really interested in what Brooks keeps doing with that book. And I'm like, shit, right, okay, I know Belle, she's a dickhead. She'll try and steal this or look over her shoulder or something. So, so you had, had to, to come up with what was I in it? I had to prep what was in it. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I had these letters, like, semi-prepped anyway. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, you know, like, I'm going to sit on this for a while. This is going to be, like, a long time down the road. And it's like, yeah, Kess reads all of this and then puts it back. And yeah. I'm like, right. So we can't address that in character. Nope. But you've just had, like, an intimate look into my character's, like, heart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also I'm kind of with with Duke on Katie's question about do the deafening does the deafening make it better or worse the physical mechanic of it kind of sucks since we're doing this virtual like mm -hmm. if we we're doing it in person and it was a quick yeah, like I, I, I leave just, the room I would just, or I would the just whisper either, either clear the room or I would like walk up to the player and be like yeah and, you know, yeah, and like that might be a bit less luxury yeah that might be a bit less frustrating just because it's like we're sat here and silence kind of awkward and we can't talk to each other because like it's better usually to be like oh what do you think they're saying and we could just kind of you mm -hmm. know, have fun. But the payoff is so worth, like, when, whenever then the things that were talked about get revealed later and the, like, <laughs> reactions and stuff. So it, it's still absolutely worth it. And overall, it makes the experience better. In the moment, it's always really annoying. Also, because there's always going to be someone who's not paying attention right when you need to. I fucking hate that. And I it's really, always... that is my biggest pet peeve. I'm like, dude, <laughs> is it that much to ask for everyone yeah. to, like, at least pay attention a little bit to, like, oh, yeah. is our people undeafening? Because yeah, I, know, I was bad about it in campaign shit. one, so I'm trying a lot harder mm. in campaign two to make sure I don't step away for even like a second, and I'm like, I pay attention. Oh, yeah, Watch if they don't undeaf and they don't get to play until they realize. Because it's always the same <laughs> fucking people as well. It's me sometimes as well, to be fair. Yeah, uh, I wasn't gonna name names, but <laughs> no, like <laughs> but I'll like, own up to oh, it. The problem dude. is that like I'll start like thinking about like, oh god, what are they saying? Then I'll be like, is this gonna take long? I know. I'll start messing with music. I'll or like. I'll start prepping something character related or like, oh, what are we going to do next? And then I'm like, oh shit, I probably should pay attention. And Dutch is yeah. there like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. I wish there was a way to like... Y'all ever like back in the day, you know, like MSN Messenger, right? Yeah. You could, uh, you dude, could, like, that you could, was like, like my nudge, every weeknight from high school. Yeah. Like a button and to send, like, send, like, a, sends like a buzzer, like. Brrr. Yeah. Okay, hear me I out. Would have that, bro. Remote vibrators. Where you get the thing where you control them for your partner, and we just all have each. Like, each <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> oh boy, so that gets uh. weird real quick. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Can you serve on death on someone? Uh, We're not, we would have to be in a we server. Have be in a, we, have, we would have to be in a server. So if we set up a server and did the call in a server, yeah, there's stuff like that we can do. But, but yeah. we could lose our chat. <laughs> but yeah, so like, uh, <clears throat> it's just like, I don't think it's that much to ask for people to at least pay a little bit of attention. Like, And if you want to fucking like do something on a second monitor, like that's fine. But like, bro, come on, you know, like pay, fucking pay attention. God. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's just a little, little pet peeve of mine that I have, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so. Now we can do Duke's questions. Duke submitted a couple questions as well. Um, since you're both monks, uh, do your characters acknowledge one another as monks? 
And do you think it will affect their interactions and relationships in the future of the campaign? On my part, absolutely not, because Daigon's monk training is in no way formal. It's literally from one individual who had the formal training, but didn't really impress a lot of the history about it or like where it came from on her kind of thing. It was more like, hey, I'm going to help you learn how to defend yourself because you're on your own kind of thing. Um, and he hinted at some of the astral stuff that she can do mm -hmm. and is now learning to do. Um but they didn't go into much detail about it. So as those abilities get crazier, she might start freaking out a little bit. She's like, I don't know what's happening, but figure it out. So, and also just the way, even the way we flavor it, like Ethan, I've talked about how our combat's just so different in style that the only thing is maybe because he did the flurry of blows <laughs> like uh, once or twice since uh, he got that level mm -hmm. and he uses key. Like, if we are operating on the premise that key, this like life force amongst them, and we can sense it in others, because a lot of key abilities are like you tap into the key of another person, because everyone has it, even though they don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's like I can maybe start to sense that that energy in Brooks is more active now, but it's not really a thing I'm paying attention to because we the way we fight is just so different, and I have no formal training with which to recognize it anyway. So it's like maybe in the back of my head I'm aware, but I haven't put much thought into it. It's really interesting because there's so many so many polar opposites but so many parallels between them as well. Like, I didn't know out of character until recently that Daigon never had any formal monk training. But Brooks never really had any formal monk training. Yeah, like they so both also... they've both been taught how to fight in a specific way. But neither of them's ever had this formal training. Like Brooks understands that like there's a vague thing that he can do. But he doesn't understand what key is, like, he doesn't understand what life force, like, he'd describe it as just like a, you've got a strong personality, and like, he'll look at Dagon, and he'll be like, even though you don't speak, like, there's just something about you, you have that presence, mm -hmm. which, he doesn't twig his key, and they fight so differently, I think there's a, there's definitely a recognition of like, they're both martial fighters, they're both people that are like, using fists when everyone else is swinging swords and using magic and shit like that but like they're so different at the same time yeah and yeah so the, i think the only thing that would really prompt Daigon to like really stop and either have a conversation about it or ask us if you started doing some of the astral stuff because that i know and like my mentor like talked about it hinted at it but said it usually takes much more training much more focused and it's a lot harder to do and not everyone can do it kind of thing so if you started suddenly spouting spectral arms like i did i might be like oh i want to talk to you because you might have insight on what my mentor went through because my mentor is dead now so i can't talk to him anymore about what that entailed but until that happens it'd just be like oh you must have had a similar teacher but different different vibe because we're we fight so differently <clears throat> plus like i, I think don't, i don't like i does Brooks even acknowledge himself as a as like a, as monk? a monk? I feel like <laughs> Brooks is just like a tavern brawler that uses that. Bro you know Brooks I mean? considers himself a brawler. Yeah. Brooks is aware that like <clears throat> Brooks is aware that he's a step above like your general like dickhead in a tavern. He understands that there is like like if he throws a punch, it isn't just pure like brute strength. There is a technique to it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he understands that there is a study of that martial ability but he was never like formally taught in a sense of like do this do this do this do this he learned by getting the shit kicked out of him yeah <laughs> like he would continually like almost like um the um god what's the name there's a specific uh it, oath, oath of um oath of conquest yeah. Like a paladin, where like you always challenge, like he's always looking for someone else that like has the means to beat the shit out of him, because to him that's mm -hmm. a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, which is also... I guess why he like walked up to like the strongest guy in that. Oh yeah, which is like, like yeah. I'm gonna fucking pick it's a like, fight rah! with this dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But... Like he's not gonna pick a fight with someone that he sees uh, as an easy victory. Like to him that's a waste of time. It's not gonna be fun. He's not gonna learn anything from it. Yeah. You know, at that point, you're just beating someone up for the sake of it. Yeah. 
Well, and the other reason that, like, the astral stuff, uh, Daigon's just kind of, like, figuring out as she goes and is much more uh, confused of the... Her mentor would have very much focused on the key aspect of training because why he left the formal order of monks where he trained was because he believed... He was very much, like, a very, like, pacifist, happy dude. He believed, like, that tapping into people's key could be used for a better purpose, like, using it to heal, to help people um with like emotional problems and stuff he didn't like the use of key for combat and he was on a search to try and find out if there was maybe true answers to their monk order like has this study been perverted is this actually what our order was for or has it changed over the years so he would have really gone into teaching her about key and using it and recognizing it in others but not so much the other stuff because he thinks it came from a perverted source of their lineage so for lack of better words, I guess. He's an interesting character. Mm. Um, yeah, like the second part of, the, of Duke's question was, how do you characters respectively view their monk aspects and teachings and well, monsters and stuff? <laughs> like, that, we've already, that, that already kind of came up here anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> Neither of them are a traditional monk, and I think that's just really exciting. It's cool. It's dope. Very cool. Um, Okay. I think it's time for you guys to collaborate on creating a D and D character. Uh, the, the it's, it's some tough competition out there. Let me tell you, the other two NPCs <laughs> that were made are fucking solid, and Loki. I want to implement all of them, but uh, well, then just do so eventually. It's just the real con the real choice no. is who's going in first, no. and then the other no. two. <laughs> no. So if you would please do me a favor and go to D and Beyond, open up our campaign space, and just like create yeah. a new character in the campaign space uh, just so you can both look. of us uh yeah so you could the, the whole like i'm creating it but that way you guys can look with me like look at like all the different choices you have and that sort of thing okay um, like after that you're not gonna actually make a character i'm making it but you're just that's just to have the page open so that you can see what i'm looking at yeah. okay um i mean I well, every, every character here you know we'll, we'll start with uh picking a race I, I kind of really want to make a Warforged. How do you feel about that, Ethan? I want to make I want to make a fun little robot character. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm open to it. Cause the I, the only thing I had as a starting point was I would love to find like just a super maybe not like Holzer, but we we find and befriend a Warforged who was built for one purpose by a master and then thrown out by his master because he didn't serve that purpose well. Like he made him to be like a barbarian, but he was too nice and he was like gentle giant, or maybe it's he made him to be a useful, like a uh, like assistant in research. And he is very fighty, like, but basically he just wasn't good at the purpose he was made for. So his master kicked him out. I guess the diff the question there would be then, do you want a very serious Warforged or like a very light hearted Warforged? I don't know. Would you would what you, you want like Bender from Futurama, or would you want like Iron Giants kind of kind of kind of vibes? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've already put forth so that's what I mean. Like, do you? How do you feel about that? Idea? I mean, or do you have other so, ideas that might be better than that? But... Dude, I didn't no, realize like, how many. I didn't realize how many races we have available to us in the fucking campaign space. Like, what the fuck is a Simic hybrid? You know? Uh, oh, that's like um, <laughs> fucking. Like, um, what the fuck? Like, uh, Leonin? I didn't even know they existed, but, like, lions and new yeah, tropical fucking jungle-type beats. I, they, dude, I might implement those in a campaign somewhere, because that's fucking I was going to cool. say, it, uh, other than the Warforged, <laughs> I'd also love to make another animal-y <clears throat> race, just because... Fun. Bias. Simic We're hybrid. a jungle-y continent, like... Simic Hybrid is basically, like, a, a human elf or dolphin, something like that, that's then been merged with, like, an animal. Yeah, fucking bunny people are the are a thing it's, now too. Yeah, yeah. Fucking what are they yeah. called? It's the uh, the ha uh, Harangon? Harangon? Like what the fuck, Harangon. dude? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> um, dude, what the hell? If you want to do like a a lighthearted style warforged, I would go with like, hey, they were built for something and didn't do it. If you want to go like deep and a little bit dark, make a warforged that just had like a, a redundancy they did what they were made for one thing they did they it they did it they had <laughs> no like 
you so know. So is it safe to assume that like Warforge is going to be the pick here? Yeah. You're already like okay. Yeah. Locking that in. Because I'm also I was also <clears> thinking <throat> about the whole because I was watching various like Critical Role highlights montage like people's fan videos because new campaign starts today and there was someone was doing a thing about all the the best like moments with Dodie from from Terry and yeah, yeah, yeah. and and the moment he's like Dodie too and during the Dallin's Claws in one shot and he's talking about all the that, different yeah. iterate oh it's the best thing they've done it's, yeah I love dude it. Anyways, I mean oh actually anyways. wait. No, no, that's the wedding. That's the wedding closet. one, right? That's the wedding one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have seen. I have seen that. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. I thought you were talking um, about the uh, the one shots where uh, what's the fucking group of people? The group Darrington called? Brigade. Yeah, that one. I thought you. Were yeah, I haven't about seen that one, that one either. But no, he mentioned in Dallin's class, like Dodie two. This went wrong. Dodie he's like Dodie four tried to kill us. And then he just casually. <laughs> and I was like, that's a one shot I want to see. So um, maybe or is a Warforge that tried to kill its best. With that in so mind, the, best, uh, the first choice you have as a Warforge is just pick a random stat that has a plus two. So I guess thinking about like the, the background, like he was made for a certain purpose. What stat would best, you know, complement that, I either that, think I it'd be fun if he was, he's a very fighty Warforged or he's like super nerd, <laughs> like, the, like the, almost like he was like a supercomputer assistant just made to store information. And he's just like a walking encyclopedia about random shit. But maybe then it's like all the information his creator wanted him to have doesn't have any just as useless trivia. It's like I I made you to help me with this field of study that I'm working on, and for some reason none of it stuck. But he's like, did you know, did you know that this blah blah blah? Yeah. Spine. Did yeah, you know like, that dolphins are the like only that. mammals in the world that fuck for pleasure? You know. Because then also <laughs> think if we met think if we met him he'd just be random facts all the time. We're all the only mammals so besides fun. humans, of course. But you like, meet him and he's like, you know did me? you know? Did you know? Also, hold hands when they sleep. <laughs> Yeah, because if oh, they don't, they like drift away so from each other, funny. right? And they yeah. like, get lost. Absolutely. Okay. So maybe we, so, we give him a plus two to intelligence and make him a walking encyclopedia robot who's just like super <laughs> friendly and real funny. A wizard, Warforged. Okay. That's super smart, but is full of useless trivia. Yeah. Because it was designed to be some sort of like educator for the creator's child. Ooh, but only like... focused on what the child wanted to learn. Yes. Oh, so it's Kes now full Kes of like. Would have a field day. Okay. So, so it's now full of like random mind, child trivia. Design, a, prof a skill and a tool to be proficient with, with that uh, with that like story in mind. I would, Calligraphy. It'd be history. Or yeah. History and then so history is a skill, right? Yeah. Yeah. History. Um, all right. Calligraphy set would work. Or and then maybe Arcana, since he was still made by a wizard. And he knows random facts about magic. Hist history or Arcana, yeah. That's up to you. You guys. You guys also, if, if the point is that he retains facts that a kid would find fascinating, like in thinking about, like, <coughs> imagine like Luke, Veth's kid in Campaign Two, and the things he wants to hear about: what monsters have you killed? What magic stuff did you do? What cool things That's did you true. find? Like flashy, shiny things are what kids like. So. So Arcana. Arcana and history okay. for like this yeah, happened. Like, you you it's either it's either Arcana or history. It's either or. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's, maybe it's then one his, skill history. proficiency and one tool and proficiency. One proficiency. Oh, yeah. okay, maybe then history. I think history for sure then for the skill, just for okay. general. And then knowledge. a tool, so calligraphy. Uh, oh, or... instruments are also a tool. Apparently, you can also go for an instrument. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> or navigators' tools, painters' supplies, <laughs> dragon chess. This dra this giant robot hunched Plays over chess. teaching a small and child like, how with, to play with chess. With big fat fingers trying to move a chess piece without breaking it because he accidentally breaks things. I'm all getting the time. like major like Iron Giant vibes from this. Just, Absolutely, like, this yeah. like oh, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm just imagining yeah. like there's four chess sets over to the side he's also where like made, they're cracked. He was also yeah. made to look very non-threatening because he's for a child, but he's also massive. Uh, so okay. it's like. <laughs> That's the only downside. That's the only thing about him that might be threatening <laughs> is his sheer size. All right. Uh, oh, so you're saying chess? dragon chess sets? Yeah. Proficiency? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, language. Ooh. What language do you want your 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 robo man or woman or both or neither? What language would a kid find fascinating to listen to even if they didn't speak it? Because they would be like, that sounds funny. And like, well, it sounds funny. Um, hmm. I I don't know why, but in my head, Loxodon is just elephant <laughs> noises. <laughs> Want to know something funny? Daigon speaks Loxodon. 
Like, well, Dagen doesn't speak anything. But... True. Well, Dagen she understands, understands Loxodon. Dagen she understands speak it. Loxodon. <laughs> how, how, do, how do you... Can you sign in Loxodon? You just do all the other signs, but you still yeah. not like this. Yeah, mm. you just learn to sign everything one-handed while your other one's up here. <laughs> uh, oh, I feel like fun. a kid would love to hear, like, this robot just be like... Make elephant Shh. noises. Yeah, I can't do it today. I can... Yeah. I'm fucking yeah. yawning like a fucking crazy I, I could go with all the weird animal based or animal race based facts because it can be like oh you know what I want I want to be a walking version you know that one guy who does the animal TikToks that are hysterical I want him to be the robot version of that TikTok that's no what idea I what, what you're talking about I'll, I'll send it to you it. later it's so yeah, good this guy's so funny oh my no, god no I don't want to like, my for you does... page because my for you page is a lot of like food yeah. right now and I don't want to he does it. entirely educational content but he delivers it in this deadpan way with the most hilarious way of wording things that's fucking hilarious and I'm just like oh so funny anyway <laughs> So, either that or, or Abyssal, so Celestial, Dalekur, Deep Speech, Draconic, Dwarvish, Elven, Giant, Gith, Gnomish, Goblin, Halfling, Infernal, Crawl, Leonin, Luxodon, Marquesian, Minotaur, Naush, Orc, Primordial, Quarry, Reedron, Sylvan, Undercommon, Verdalkin, Zemnian. I would say. I think one of the fun. Fun animal like like Minotaur Loxodon. Either Leonin or Loxodon. Yeah. Because yeah. Leonin, like, you, you just like fucking. It's cool. Lion Rar horse, XD. Right? Like, <laughs> or <clears throat> would the owner have taught him something like Zemnian? I was like, we also need to kind of think about who the. a little bit about who the owner is, because that informs a lot more about this character. Is the owner just like some rich like noble who had money to spare and was like i don't want to teach my kid myself but i don't want to send them to public school fuck it i'll make you a tutor kind like of thing like a artificer that, that yeah. was like cba teaching my own kid yeah yeah like like a, not a great parent probably shouldn't be a parent but is one kind of thing mm -hmm. i mean and then this, uh, this and then the war foretold thing could be like i want to find the kid i was in charge of because i know they're really sad without be me because i was like their best friend and then i got kicked out and i'm worried for the kid because their dad's not that nice. let's go like, let's oh. go locks it on because it's funny language <laughs> okay uh boss we're gonna go are we going wizard yeah no oh for him for the yeah. robot for the for the war for i would guess yeah for the robot it's either it's either wizard or or bard but we've sort of got intelligence yeah i think wizard because also bard, we didn't give it a musical instrument proficiency so we don't need a musical instrument Is so a wizard bard. yeah i think yeah. wizard so what's any what's the other intellect class make him level three for now so that we uh, can pick a, a subclass as well yeah okay uh, i guess wizards got that level two it's technically right arcane tradition but like whatever yeah uh, so, I mean, yeah, subclass, arcane tradition. We have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Ooh, order of scribes? So what's what fits best for a tutor, for a glorified tutor and babysitter? So an order, order of scribes, uh, as bonus action, you can magically create a tiny quill in your free hand. It doesn't require ink. It produces ink of your color and choice on the writing surface. Ooh, I like uh, it. Because then you would always have a tool to write when giving lessons. To write on yeah. paper or an easel or a and chart. And you can mess around with stuff in your uh, spell book. That's about that. Or either, I would say either that. Oh, you can use the quill for like transcribing spells and shit. That'd be cool. Yeah. I would say either that or <coughs> illusionist. Who needs PowerPoint when you can just illusion magic? I don't know. I like the yeah. scribe one. Okay. Well, those are scribes, I guess. Are there scribes? What's up, the skeletons? Awakened spellbook. Using spe specially prepared inks and ancient incantations passed down by your wizardly order, you've awakened an arcane sentience within your spellbook. While you're holding the book, it grants you the following benefits. You can use it as a spellcasting focus. When you cast a wizard spell with a spell slot, you can temporarily replace the damage type with a type that appears in another spell of your spellbook. So you can literally alter the spell's formula, say a spell does acid damage, but you know the enemy you're fighting is resistant to that. You can just say, oh, I also have fire spells, so I'm going to make the acid spell do fire damage instead. That's, That's fucking cool. sick. That's powerful. That is cool as fuck. Absolutely. Actually. 
That is fucking cool. I like it. Uh, and when you cast I a wizard spell like as a ritual, spell, you can so use a spell's normal it. cast time instead of having to sit there for 10 minutes once per long rest. That's fucking you sick. Can, like, you can chalk out like a fucking <clears throat> like detect a magic circle in like, yeah, in like a, in six, six seconds. seconds rather That's crazy. than 10 minutes. That's fucking Good cool. Board. What the hell? Legitimately, just uh, it's, order of scribes, take every fucking ri uh, ritual spell you can because you get to cast oh, well, them and basically. Because you're a wizard, free. you can still go for the arcana the proficiency if you would so want. Hell yeah, there so, we go. There we go. Uh, and you have another skill, either insight, investigation, medicine, or religion for a proficiency. Maybe medicine, because in case the kid ever, because kids are always hurting themselves, so He's, the robot could. He has, a, he has a first aid qualification to basic yeah. first aid. <laughs> basic first aid training. I mean, that uh, up to you. The... Yeah, fuck it. Okay. Um, I want both of you to roll one d six for me, please. <gasps> I get to roll dice. We're I'm rolling for his HP, and I'm giving it the first like level gets max HP anyway. So I roll the five. Nice. Six. I yeah. mean, he's a wizard. It doesn't matter. He's going to die in two hits. Mm -hmm. but... I rolled a five. Nice. nice. So that's six plus ten is sixteen. Rolled HP. There you go. Um. <clears throat> okay. As far as spells go, what we'll do is uh, I will allow... You're, you're, you know three cantrips. So, yeah. like, uh, that's something you're going to have to figure out. And I'll say that uh, your wizard robot knows five spells. Ooh. Uh, two first level, two second level, I think... Wait, do you have Am access to third level? No. Level? Uh, three first, two second level. Three first. Okay, so and then let's also do three cantrips, cantrips first. Yeah. So we have three cantrips. E. Mm. He would have to know press the digitation because kids are messy. And that way Absolutely. also the dad doesn't want to clean up after his child. So he has to know... Well, I mean, that that's just a given. <laughs> Press the digitation, um, adding to the list. Boom. That's one cantrip done. He's a wizard, so for pure <laughs> balance, we should give him a damage cantrip. Yeah. Um. Shocking grasp? Well, then he needs to get up close to people. Um. Probably. Fire, fire bolt? Probably fire bolt. Fire bolt. Yeah. A good damage cantrip. Yeah. Fire bolt? Yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like dancing lights, because easiest way to, when the kid was younger, like calm down or get the attention of a crying or upset or like hyper child. Ooh, look shiny. Ooh, pretty. Uh huh. <laughs> or... Mesmerized. So either that or I learned about this fucking cantrip last week and code what? thoughts, which is it's literally cool. like the Harry Potter. Pull yeah, like out you of pull head, out put it in cauldron and let it That's swim there. That's cool. It's fucking sick. <clears throat> Do 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 it. That was something else I had as well. I can't remember what it is. All right, so one more cantrip. Um, that true strike, of course. <laughs> mage hand. Uh, the mage hand could work, or uh, minor illusion for like illustration. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and like uh, when teaching, when talking about a certain thing, you can make the illusion of the creature or the person or the yeah, place that, that he was that talking about. That seems like. That's in my head. That's what I see as like a yeah. magical tutor. Yeah. So minor illusion. So precipitation, minor illusion, and firebolt are the three cantrips that you went with. Yes. Yep. All right. First level spells. You get three. Ooh. Comprehend languages. Yeah, so that they could read. He could read texts in other languages to teach yep. the kid. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> Mage armor, because he because otherwise like, he dies. The guy didn't uh, well, and the guy he's like the guy didn't build me that great. I'm still a bit like, flimsy, <laughs> like built out of scrap metal and shit. He saved his good shit. Like this artificer saved his good again because he clearly does not care that much about his kid. So he saved the good <laughs> materials for better robots for better things. The tutor robot, he's like, I'll use some scrap metal. Yeah. I don't know why, but I have this idea that like the tutor robot was built really well at first. And they were Just really falling rich. into disrepair. Like the household as a whole, like things went downhill, and so he starts yeah. like swapping out like cheaper parts on the exterior of this this warforged, yeah. like taking all the gilded metals off, and then eventually sells the warforged. Oh yeah! Oh, I love that. That's how he ended up not with the sad. house anymore. <laughs> that's so sad. But that's dude. it. That's it. That's it. Maybe okay. then. What about also like sleep as well? Just because like when the kid wouldn't go to bed. <laughs> 
Sleep. Sleep just seems we perfect. Sleep now. <laughs> uh, sleep. Yep. Shield. Yeah. So, so we we've got comprehend languages. We've got sleep. Sleep. So one more first level. Uh, mage armor or shield. Uh, mage I'm armor. Fine or. I feel like shields. Uh, over over one turn, shield is much better. Yeah. Over a combat, mage armor. But is he really going to be getting up close? Plus, you can shield someone else. Yeah. Oh no, you can't. It's just you. Uh. Up to you, pick one. I, don't I love mind. how shield specifies that it's a reaction which you take when you're hit by an attack or magic missile. Then, uh, I yeah, say... Yeah, because you can just be like, no. Because yeah. technically, you can boost your AC yeah, to Yeah, so like, but like, say someone casts Firebolt, your reaction to do shield doesn't proc. It has to be magic missile. No, no. Firebolt is an attack. Oh, right, because magic missile auto hits. That's why. Right, okay. That's yes. Why. Yeah. It got has it, to specify it, it, magic it. missile. Yes. Because okay. you could boost your AC to a million and magic missile. Right. Will, yeah. Still... Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. That's why. I was just like, why is that specified? But yeah, it makes sense. It's the only spell that auto hits. Okay, we'll dodge. Go, go with shield. I was going to say dodge pick one. <laughs> no. Just go with shield. Uh, shield second level. Shield. Okay. So two. Uh, second two levels, levels, right? Do you want to pick levels. one each? Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. You can do that. I'm torn between. Like either detect thoughts because if the kids like the kid is ever lying like did you do your homework no or yes and looks at like to tell or um where's the other one a whole person when they're being unruly just like nope oh God, nope fucking paralyze the cunt stand still <laughs> locate Bad. objects when they've lost something <laughs> oh that's a good well that's cute <laughs> sky right um, uh, snowball swarm just seems hilarious <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards hold person for my choice. Okay. But I also uh, like locate objects a lot. So if, if you don't if you don't pick it, I might pick locate object actually. That's a bit more wholesome. <laughs> I'm tempted to pick something like alter self. All right, I'll pick locate object for mine. Locking in locate objects. Hmm. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I feel, I feel like alter self again with like illusionary. Like I'm just imagining this this warforged, like changing its appearance and doing like, you know, like in front of the class presentations as like this historical figure that I've chosen to teach you about today. Yeah. Also, if the if the 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 dad ever sent it on like errands because as he has to start letting staff go because their house started losing money, the the tutor also became. You have to go pick up our groceries. You have to go pick up my shipment of materials that I'm going to try and use to start this. I don't want know that I still don't have servants. Yeah, so you need to look like something else, so. Oh. Uh. Because also, but do Warforge need to, like, eat and sleep? No. Nope. That's what so, all the They have maybe to sit you... still at night yeah. for like six hours or some shit, but they are they still go conscious. They power saving. Yeah. They, they are conscious he... and they will all wait, they will see in here as if they're awake. They just yeah. can't move. Because also, why he partially could have he fired all the human staff because they're more expensive to upkeep because you have to pay them properly. You have to, they need food. They need shelter. He's like the robot doesn't need jack shit. I can be mean to the robot. Okay. So alter self. Yes. Locking it in. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I mean, this doesn't really matter that much, but like, as far as like, oh, what he has three spells prepared. Which one would you be like? Oh, this one is a, this is what he has prepared. Uh, Whatever the most offensive. Uh, yeah, and anything that's the most offensive, because now he's been separated. He's out in the the well, wild. He doesn't. He doesn't to... need his rituals prepared. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> just prepare everything that's not a ritual, I guess. I mean, there's yeah. four spells that aren't ritual, and you can prepare three. So okay, is there? Yeah, the only ritual here is Comprehend Languages. Um, Shield, Sleep, Alter Self, and Locate Objects are no ritual spells. So, like, you have to... I would say that he doesn't have Locate up. Object prepared at the moment. Yeah, because that was really to help around. when the kid yeah, was missing. Something. I lost my Digimon! I can't find my favorite teddy bear. 
fine. The dog ate my homework. Did it now. Okay, do you need Because I can me, load it's your not letting me prepare spells, so I'd go fuck myself, I guess. Do that later. Uh, for the sake of ease, uh, I went with standard array for ability scores for every everyone, so I'm going to do the same for you. Sure. Standard array. So what what would you like your... Uh, What's his dump stat? Stats uh, to be like. I mean, I would say charisma, right? Like... So well, no, because he, he, he couldn't scare the kid. He still had to have social skills, especially if you're sending him out to... to I, also I feel do, like him being like, a teacher uh, requires a bit of charisma, right? Like, charisma, yeah. Like, have you had the teachers without it in real life? You and your character boring. Making, but, yeah. Okay. I think <laughs> I mean, maybe dexterity so we, should be the dump stat because he's a big, bulky big, big robot made of shit material. That would yeah, explain so why he breaks chess pieces. Yeah, so dexterity is his lowest. So that's okay, eight so that's eight. <clears throat> and then intellect is his highest. Yeah. We can make charisma at the very least, maybe like a ten. Like it doesn't have to be bad. I just don't want it to be negative. It just that's all. But if you want to make it like Dude. the next lowest stat, giving him fifteen in mean... makes it so that he uh, has a total of sixteen. So he's he's very smart. Yeah. So that's fifteen yeah. for your intellect. That is eight for dex. Uh, that we, leaves fourteen, should, thirteen, twelve, and ten. We should make the wisdom relatively low because again, it's like he's very book smart. Like all this trivia, all these facts, but like no people. street smarts. He has no social. Should we make, should like we make the, that his dump he's... stat then and make dexterity a little higher? Oh, so make wisdom eight and dexterity yeah. like ten. Sure. Cool. Okay. Incredibly book smart, not very street savvy. So, so we you have to with 12, 13, 12, 13 yeah. and fourteen. I for mean, either I strength, like, con, or charisma. 14 for like strength. Con. Oh, yeah. So maybe then we make the 12, the charisma, the 13, the strength, the 14, the constitution. Yeah. That leaves us with some pretty fucking good stats, to be fair. Yeah, that leaves you with 13 strength, 10 dex, 16 con, 16 int, 8 wisdom, 12 charisma. Nice. I like pretty it. Pretty solid. Okay, dokie. Now we get to the fun of it. Uh, let's start Ooh. with a name. Uh, actually, um, let's go with physical characteristics first. Okay. Um, well, we, like gender, obviously, you know, it's a robot, right? Like, it's, 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 I guess we can say like gender determines just like the physique a little more, like what the design the is voice. like, but and voice, but like so, like if you like want to give it to gender, or feminine you can, rather but... than like gender. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, are we going for like a masculine or feminine wolf? I mean, it sounded like masculine just because the arrogance of the it was built by the father, and the father's like this is just my stand-in really for me. Really sad the idea. Because sure. Oh, does he make you it look like a dead wife? Looks like other way around. Like, female like, artificer. Like bitch ex-wife. Female like artificer that made it look like her have passed away. But then she'd be nicer husband. to the robot unless she hated her husband. Because then well, she'd no, be nicer she do. I don't think she. I don't think she ever hated the robot. I think it's just that oh. she was so focused on like single parenting, trying to make income to. Oh, okay. To keep things as they Done. were. And then you I'm have down. this 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 mother who's like slowly like pawning off her own things. Pawning then off her you know like pawning off bits of this, this war force from, to like, replace This artificer is an asshole. To this artificer is super sad. Real quick. Yeah, all of a sudden we made the <laughs> yeah. artificer real sad. Like it just started off as like, oh, this fucking asshole artificer you know, hates his kid. Well, man, I mean, okay, man. but that's great because as a kid, your parents not there. You resent them for it, and then as you grow up, you realize that she wasn't there because she was because trying she was to trying just keep to, things she was, together. She was trying to make stuff and like you know like make things work. Because maybe before, and... the dad, whatever he did, was like primary money maker, and so that way she could follow her passion of just like inventing and making stuff. Now she's like, fuck, I have to make this lucrative, but I haven't ever invented anything that's really that great. And then it, that's why it went downhill. She was never, she's not like a, she, she doesn't have, she's not a Jax. She's not that no. skilled at coming up with all these incredibly unique, amazing, or useful. She's like, I can do stuff. I can make stuff, but it's nothing groundbreaking and something that's going to support me and my family What's or, the, or there's a character fun. in popular media either tv or movie i can't remember who it but like one of them's an inventor and like is supported by their partner but like never makes anything and then they have a breakthrough and that's like the premise of the movie or the show that was in the there's a, a christmas special on netflix that just was last christmas that was that was kind of the plot it was about like an inventor and i can't remember his name no idea but anyway um yeah like I feel like either a completely like non-gendered wolf forge or like maybe like a, a male figure. Yeah. A vaguely like, like male gender looking for this would just purely be like for like voice and, and yeah. 
like, and yeah. like maybe it has slightly broader shoulders and it's clearly yeah, very and like, tall. It, like it, some it, stuff it that are just more the phys- stereotypically the physique, like a little bit. Just to, yeah, yeah. The the original armor set was actually like designed to be like a suit style. Yeah. Like a so for gender, I'll put in then like male influences or something yeah. like that. It's like, yeah. Uh, does that? Th- did they give the robot hair? I wasn't picturing it, but I'm not against. I mean, it. it's up to you. No, I don't see it either. I don't, I don't I see think, hair. I think maybe at the start, but by now it's a very basic looking it's because like, she's had to keep stripping it down, stripping it down, selling for parts. Now it's a very very. So basic at one point looking. it had like a like metal like fixtures that looked like hair which yeah. has just been removed because it was made of like solid gold or something because uh, like, the, okay, the person okay. she was modeling it after was blonde and it's like nah i can't afford to keep um, that so like that, that was gold. the first thing to go and she was like she was always <laughs> like to this rope like when i get things sorted we'll put we'll, we'll, we'll sort your hair we'll put it back we'll put it back, we'll put it back. you know oh, like so telling sad, the kid dude. telling the kid like don't worry he'll he'll look he'll look like he used to soon that's so sad <laughs> okay i fucking love it um skin like what kind of material would the skin be made of and any any, 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 any basic... features on the skin i i think iron, originally is it, brass? Is it i think what is originally it, it was like like decorative like brass maybe and at this point it's just like it's like, rusty too. It should be rusty from yeah. not like, having anyone like, like look at it. Iron, rusty iron, or <laughs> or I suppose it could still be like it used to be like something like like gold, and then they went to like copper, and then they went to brass, and now it's just that like blue brown that like, kind of tarnished... oxidized like yeah, you brass, know that like yeah. almost like bluey green brass yeah, color yeah yeah yeah. So oxid like oxidized brass yeah. yeah. Uh, any any other like features on like the skin uh, like any anything? There should details? be one feature left on it that was like she couldn't bear to remove it. That maybe is late. It's... <laughs> yeah, it has the mustache. It has the mustache. Not the <laughs> what kind of mustache though? There's many kinds. Important. Like oh god, the, the, the um, classic like curly the classic, like, man. <laughs> yeah, but like like very bushy hair, and then <laughs> and it's just engraved into its. It's the plate's also part of what maybe it did, or is it? extra on top but it, she just still didn't remove it either way it has a nice mustache maybe maybe it, it used to be a proper mustache and now it's just like copper Engraved. wire like a copper wire it's like <laughs> that's like been like um oh, like braided together so it's like yeah. two braids of copper yeah, wire yeah 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 so like a copper wire curly mustache yeah yeah okay uh eyes did they have i had like the idea of like a zenyatta Empty. face yeah, where there's just nothing yeah. there. Like a well, there's, there's like holes. There's like holes in the place like, where eyes would be. Like a dent, like a, a divot, but like not actually an yeah. eye. So there's like eye holes, but there's no but like no, light, thing. no like there's bright, like there, colored yeah. like eyes in there. It's just it's just dull. No, because originally there might have been gemstones in the holes they were for out. eyes, and she'd pop them out to sell them. Because, so like so dull, it's like a, it's like an empty socket. socket. Yeah. It's like an empty socket. You can't fit into the head. Yeah. Like, it's just where there was it's just, a gem. It's just a dent. It's just like a dent. Maybe there's yeah. painted, there's like chipping or faded paint, because the kid maybe painted the him kid some painted new a, The kid painted two and little look, smiley like eyes. Googly, they could be like googly eye style, because the kid did it, so they're kind of but like, like one of, funny. One looking. of them's completely gone, and the other's just like, <laughs> crim- like oh crumbling God. paint. This poor Warforged, oh like, my God. like every, time it ra- every time it rains, this poor Warforged walks around like this. This is so sad. Protect. This is so sad. Holy fuck. This Warforge is trying to cover this paint. I mean, you have Jesus. two of the most probably arguably twisted players in the group, minus Fucking Bell, hell. present. Look, so let's be honest. If we, if we can't happen. win the popular vote on a good character, we'll we're going to make the sad boy. We'll get the pity votes. All right, dude. Are you, are you telling me, chat, that you're really going to vote against this Warforge? You know you want to see I mean, this Warforge. Think about, there's some, think I mean, about the other what two voice. characters are very cool as think well. Think about like, what voice touch. But see, but anyone can make a cool character. Come on. Look at this. That's not true at all. I disagree. I disagree. Uh, ours is better think so, about the, so cool. but think about what voice dutch would give this robot just think about it i bet you'd be great It'd be amazing me. <laughs> I one day it just wakes teach. up and says exterminate i want to be a real boy <laughs> I used to teach. um height how tall do you want this uh this boy very to very be? big very, who's the tallest member in our party and then add two inches on that Jax is tallest, and he's seven foot something. So he's seven foot two. Is he? Is Jax seven foot? He's super fucking tall. 
So go like, after all those jacks. Like you know. maybe like six eight or something stupid. Like Jax is really tall. Can we look at his character sheet? On uh, yeah. I'm checking right now. Six. Oh, eight. he said he's six eight. Then the robot's seven foot. Seven foot. Easy. Could be right. six ten. Uh, wait, CBA. Nah, how old is foot. this robot? So, like, how long ago? Like, how many years ago has this oh, been built? Oh, kids ago a teenager abandoned? now. Okay. Or kids and an adult now. Single digits. I think hmm? teenager, because if, if 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 this character ever gets in the world and then we reunite, because his goal is to be reunited, finds the teenager and be more of a potentially emotional and happier unit of their teenager than okay, a full grown adult out. now, and like, fuck that. They're a full on adult with their own child. Yeah! And then it's like, if, if they ever found him again, they could take him and he could it's become It's one their of the women that we met last campaign! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, I guess, like, I like 25, 30. So yeah, the robots, yeah, 25 or 30. I mean, 25 Let's or 30. Let's say 30. Let's say 30. Uh, maybe the robot doesn't know. Yeah, the robot's like, I think I am around this many. <laughs> it's been a while. I don't keep track. The robot time. doesn't, the robot, incredibly intelligent. No concept of years. Yeah, Simply... with, the proficiency, with the proficiency in history, doesn't know yeah, how old no, he no, is. No, no, right. no. 30. <laughs> the robot's 30. No, like, has a proficiency in history before you made a 16 intellect robots it'll know how old it is <laughs> <laughs> why okay it has the capacity to why would it care for this robot there is simply when the girl was there and when the girl i wasn't. said 30 dutch <laughs> just go with god it. Go with literally <laughs> the least important thing you're making convoluted ethan <laughs> suck my dick dude I'm sorry, am I building a character properly by taking care and showing details? About the age of all fucking things? About... <laughs> oh, I'm about to... Oh, phew, I'm about to act up. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, 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 before we continue, let's, uh, let's <laughs> give the robot a name. What's a name that sounds like or evokes the feeling of Doty, but isn't Doty? <laughs> Cock. I feel like it should be two syllables. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad. Fantasy name generator. It is. I'm so bad. That's, I'm so bad at names all the time. Let's look at names for robots. Garen. Uh, because then the robot will be like Garen. 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 Wally. <laughs> Wally. Wally. <laughs> I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna do a few. Oh my god. <laughs> Name plier. <laughs> That's sad. Teacher bought nine thousand. Cave gear. Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> oh. Boomer. <laughs> every, every lesson starts with back in my day. Okay, back boomer. Oh day. god. I hate and the kid this. replies to it. Okay, boomer. Whatever the oh, boomer asks oh, her to do I something. <laughs> <laughs> we never used to have robots. Okay, boomer. Please, 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 his name's Boomer, just so whatever he says, because also whatever he says is random facts that nobody asked for, they just go, yeah, okay, Boomer. <laughs> go back I mean, and miss Yeah, if you want to I want to say yes for the meme. I, I, I hate it, but I want to say yes for the meme. <laughs> okay. His name is Boomer. Boomer it is. All right. Fuck me. Uh, we uh, made this really heartbreaking character. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> we, we made this really heartbreaking character, and then we named him the equivalent of Dick Personal Fuck characteristics. <laughs> Um, given that he's a Warforged, um, actually, we'll go, we'll go with a little backstory first, and then based on that, we can kind of fill in some ideals, bonds, flaws, and that sort of shit. So, backstory. Um, uh, I did the same thing with the other two duos. Give me, like, a short, like, synopsis of this robot's backstory. And what made him so, to be what he is now. Boomer was made by a aspiring by an aspiring artificer to help look after her daughter and act as her tutor. First sentence. Um okay. he also had at one point a resemblance to her late husband. As the years went on and she struggled to make ends meet, the robot's attachments and appearance had to be stripped down for extra income, along with various other facets of their household. Right, the robot's attachments and appearance had to be stripped down 
along with other facets of their household. Meaning also like letting staff go, selling jewelry, you know. My mother's dress that she wore to her (laughs) wedding in the second era before Orcus ruined our household. Yep. Eventually, left with no other choice, Boomer had to be sold. And where did he go? Where did he end up before he's now on his own? Like, who was the first? Yeah. Who was it? What was he sold to? Who or who? Where is Boomer An now? orphanage? Or... An orphanage? <laughs> no, okay, so the question is, was he sold into something he was good at? Or was he sold into, like, just pure basic manual I think he labor? was sold to, yeah, some pure manual labor. And then they got rid of him because they were so annoyed of the constant educational facts. They're like, nobody asked! And they just got rid of him because they're like, we hired you to, like, lift shit help me load things they to got rid of the farm like or at, something. At, at, at the docks somewhere like in a dock where yeah. he was yeah. sold into like, docks yeah. and the salt water is why oh, there's this brass he's patina that's why and he he's seized rusted. he seized and they assumed that he was dead and or they broken and he got broken dead same thing yeah yeah he he seized up completely and they transport they they junked him and he was transported away to somewhere warmer, like I don't know, like like he was, yeah, like, like vagrant. <laughs> he was transported somewhere warmer, and the you know, or not even that, just like someone someone looked and realized, hey, this could totally be worth messing with. Or maybe that, also because he he was wor- he was working at docks, and then they threw him as scrap just onto another ship that was leaving the dock, just because he was frozen, like seas, they didn't know what to do with him, and that's how he ended up at Agrand because he, he was he just was, like a stowaway oh. on a ship that they thought was scrap metal. But then we need to figure out how he wakes up. They tied him to the front of a new ship that hadn't been fitted with a figurehead yet. Ah, he's the His seized the body boat. was used ah. as a figurehead for like four years. And then eventually someone took oh, it off when maybe... the boat crashed in Agrend. No, no, then the boat just needed maintenance done. And while they were like shining him up, he then like wakes up because they helped like oil him. They fixed him. They made him look nicer because Someone he was... started like taking it apart to fix it and realized that it's, you know, like Still by alive. taking it apart that they unseized yeah. him. He's yeah. okay, the okay, trauma. Okay. So, being found by crew of sailors, attached the body to the front of the ship to function as a figurehead for several years. Is that what we're going yep. for? Okay. Yep. And then? Um, one, one day when the ship was being maintenanced, the, the, the service done on Boomer caused him to reanimate. Caused, um, caused him to re, to, to like reset, I guess. And like... Yeah, whatever. Um, once, and then once it was learned, he was sentient. Uh, the, the crew took him off the ship and left him to go about his way to go about his life off the ship and dropped him off um should we say like they dropped him off like they were in they were at like a dock city in agrand and they were like yeah, oh yeah, well here absolutely. you go yeah and they're just like well here you go because he's okay. like i because he just said i need to get back to land because i need to find insert daughter's name he doesn't realize he's been maybe moved so far away he doesn't realize he's on the wrong continent now. He doesn't know how much time okay, passed Okay, so now like a conclusion, yeah. like one sentence. What is Boomer doing now, now that he is in Agrand and he's like gotten a second chance at life in a way? Like looking... one sentence to close it off to, maybe, to basically say Do like, we want him to be looking now? for the child he used to tutor or do we want him to be trying to find his own purpose now? Because maybe he's like, well, maybe he eventually figured out he's so far away and he's like, well, she's gone. Like, that's, I'm not getting back there time to find a new purpose or do we want him to be looking for her guess he's is he now looking for that sort of individual relationship is he looking for people he can teach and also protect maybe he's looking for a new protege to teach because that's what he was built for this is when he joins the group permanently and just like like, as we're dying, comes and, like, medicine checks us. Did you know, the average human has eight liters of blood. You yeah, currently like, have three. Like <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, good. Thanks, oh, good. Boomer. Did you know, it takes on average 36 <laughs> seconds per sitch in order to fix a, a grievous wound. I hate this. Um, <laughs> I hate this, but I love it. <laughs> so, what, now Boomer is searching for a new protege to teach, as this is what he was yep. built for? Yep. Yeah. 
but most people either maybe just because they haven't seen you know, a Warforged, I'm sure, or maybe just because they're like, well, we have, you know, like all of our schools or whatever. It's like, we all have teachers now. So he just kind of goes from town to town looking for a teaching position and hasn't found right. one yet. Um, you have a 60% chance The last of thing we have to do, second to last thing, actually. First thing, uh, what kind of background? Uh, scholar, I think, would be closest, right? Yeah, I think so. Scholar? Yeah. Uh, where's the scholar? Where's the scholar? Where's the scholar? Is it sage? I don't see a scholar. What the fuck? Uh, sage. Oh, is, is it oh, acolyte? Sage. Is, or is acolyte? Acolyte's what, religious. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sage. Oh, no, cloistered scholar. Sorry. Cloistered scholar? There's cloistered scholar. Yeah. Um. Or there's sage, I guess. Um. So cloistered scholar is. Uh, you found your way to one of Faerun's greatest institutes of learning where you apprenticed and taught that knowledge is more valuable treasure than gold or gems. Um, that does make sense, Swede, but as far as, like, Warforged go, there is a, um... There's some level of sentience. There's some level of sentience in these. Like, they're not, like, just mindless robots. They're because of the... Yeah. Because magic, there is some level of, like, sentience to them, giving them the ability to, like, learn as well uh, as they yeah. as they keep doing things. Okay, I think Sage fits closest. I'm down for Sage, yeah. Sage? All right. Rocket Sage? Yo! <laughs> Twitch partner, Rocket Sage, part of level select. Shout out. <laughs> uh, that comes with another two skill proficiencies, so... Um, I mean, what are we really good at? We're really good at intelligence. So maybe he's good at investigation because also like sense. having to look for when the kid would kind of goes with yeah. the locate object when the kid was missing, or even around the house, help her yeah. find. I can see that. I can see that. And then <clears throat> is nature wisdom based? Yeah, I think so. What's I believe so. But even though it's not great, uh, the nature could still be picked just because it's part of the, the the animal knowledge in particular that he was really true, enjoyed teaching about. True, so it's true. like, even though it's a wisdom-based skill, that's just one very small subsect of wisdom. Oh, nature is like, intellect. Like Survival this. is wisdom. Okay. Oh, answer. then nature. Uh, then nature. nature. Right. The um, cow You also goes... get two more languages, mm. so... Do we pick the other animal languages? Just because we picked Loxodon, do we then give him Leonin and Minotaur? Uh, yeah. I think we should give him one of those and then give him like one serious one as well. What would be maybe one of the more common ones in Agrin? Or what, what's the one he'd pick up again? Because docks and traveling, he could have reasonably been exposed to anything because he worked around sailors for years who went all over the place. So. Like a safe bet would always be like dwarvish or elvish, right? Like it would yeah. always be like a safe bet. Goblin, okay. gnome. Uh, so, so this Halfling. is our tipster. What race is she? I don't know. Like in, in your my mind? Head I had, in my head, I had just a human. Okay, so she's human. Is her what is is her late husband human? Maybe he was like a half elf or something. So then, then so then so then she could taught, be elvish. She taught him elvish. Because that could be also like be why. Because that could also be why the loss was so hard. Because half elves live longer than humans. She never expected to be the so surviving like of the two. Yeah. yeah. No, she and was. All, she was like. She there was an accident until so we elvish, found out it was the child. So <laughs> elvish, and then, and then, what was the other one we picked? Was it was it Loxodon? The other one we picked. We picked yeah. Loxodon. So okay, so now we give him Leonin. elvish and Leonin. Yeah. Elvish and Leonin. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, and then the last thing, based on the character you've made, um, a, a personality trait, just one, a flaw, an ideal, just to give a, to give us a little more more insight in in what drives this. His ideal this should robot. be something about like striving for knowledge or like knowledge is one of the most noble pursuits. Something the about path to power the... and self improvement is through knowledge. Yeah, that one. There we go. <laughs> e either that or or logic, I guess. Yeah. But... Emotions must not cloud our logical thinking. Nah, nah, nah. Mm. I guess I think there's some emotion there because he cared for the kids, stuff like that. That's so true. I think That's true. I That's think true. the other one about the knowledge, knowledge one. the path to power and self improvement is yeah. through knowledge. All right. Um. As far as personality traits go, you can make a, up a custom one, but there's just eight like there for you to pick from. If that's could a flaw be like. something along the lines of like he insists on trying to teach everyone even when it's clear they cannot be taught, 
like you know those people it's like like it's, again with the just coming in with the facts all the time and trying to like when you know those people who try and turn everything into a teachable moment you're like no sometimes things just suck and they can just suck for no mm -hmm. reason okay like yeah, he's I mean, one of those yeah, you can, you how can we avoid this ones, next time we did everything right but we weren't shut up yeah exactly we just got fucked lady luck didn't like us today well maybe next time no yeah so his flaw is he tries is he sees everything as a teachable moment and it's like no <laughs> stop <laughs> Okay. Boom. Uh, personality trait. Ah. Um, Curious, because goes with the looking for knowledge. I'm willing to listen to every side of argument. I use polysyllabic words that convey the impression of great erudition. What the fuck does oh that mean? Oh my god. That means it, I use, I use words with lots of syllables. Words seem smart. Is that what that is? Yeah, yes, that's so what it means. <laughs> but written in that <laughs> exact. Written in, in that like. So, I hate the I hate the indie beyond. Because, fuck them. Because erudition <laughs> is knowledge. Polysyllabic. It's, it's fuck the same so way that they've gone. Words. I. Dot dot dot. Speak. Dot dot dot. Big Slowly. words, because I dot, see dot, you dot. smart. Oh god, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It fits so well, though, but I hate that, it. Though. I don't think he would, though, because if he was originally tutoring nah, a kid, is, he would is actually he's smart. Language. Yeah. The, well, and also, the big words would go over a kid's head. You gotta... Um, I'm used to helping out those who aren't as smart as I am, and I patiently That's explain anything and everything to others. Oh, yes. There you go. That fits. Also, it's like, imagine you're in the middle of a fight with the big bad, but then the big bad asks a sarcastic and question. Bombs. And he's like, well, actually, and goes on to lecture. And you're like, no, shut you're up. You're in the middle of the fight. He watches you get stabbed <laughs> and he goes, it is best in my experience so to for avoid bombs, the point The first end. one that comes up is, it is my duty to protect my students. That seems pretty fucking fitting. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. And, and that's part of why he's so lost right now. He's like, I don't have students. In my I don't have life. a duty because I, I have students. no students. Ah. Yeah. I don't have a duty because okay. I don't have bowels. Uh, I think... Uh, oh, I'll do the starting equipment real quick. Uh, dagger or quarter staff? Quarter staff. Quarter staff. He's big boy. Uh, uh, quarter staff pouch, also like you can or arcane focus. This does not matter because because of his ad backstory or because of his he archetype. Just uses his book. He uses his book, but he has either or anyway. So yeah. Like, uh, arcane the focus. Not be the arcane focus. Like no, because then you can have another arcane focus in case. Oh, his mustache. Arcane... His mustache is the arcane focus. The kids. One of the kids' dolls. Oh, that's cute. One, one of the he kids can keep like, it, like inside him because he's hollow on the inside. Yeah. And the doll just lives. In, you like, open it up and it's just like a, a a small doll that's been like held in place. Um, <laughs> okay, arcane focus. Oh my God, we can go full metal alchemist style. He scholar's back or explorer's back. The scholar's back comes with like a book and book of lore and shit like that. That seems way more yeah. applicable. Yeah, scholar's right? back. Yeah. A spell book, which yeah, you know, no duh. Uh, a bottle of black ink, a quill, a small knife, a letter from a dead colleague posing a question you may not have yet. Yeah, that's just okay. That doesn't really. Where's Anthony? Common clothes and a pouch containing ten gold. Fuck it. There you go. Boom. Run it. Boom. I love the idea that this, like, we've gone through subclasses. Like, you don't need pens and ink. And then he's gone. Yeah, but I like traditional. But I like to use. Them. All right. That is the three characters made. They're there now. He doesn't use them. I'm going to make a teaching. poll right after stream, and we're gonna spit it out, and we're gonna have people vote. We're not allowed to vote, I'm guessing, like, no. party members are discouraged from voting. Party members are discouraged from voting, correct. And I bully my family members and colleagues into voting. <laughs> I mean, hey, fuck it. Also, to tell them to drop a follow, because we're five away from 200. <laughs> um, yeah, I think with that said, uh, I'll leave you off with a little bit of a, 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 a tease for next episode, this Sunday, as we're taking a few days to kind of chill in, in um, Eldilon, show Siren around, among other things. Um, I'll leave you off with a teaser of sometimes you find trouble where you least expect it. Oh boy, some evil asshole in the city. <clears throat> uh, and with that said, thanks so much for watching Dungeon Discourse. Thanks, Laura and Ethan, for being here. Um, we'll see you all again on Sunday for episode 11 of Dungeon Select. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Appreciate you. Um, have a good night. Enjoy, if you're watching Critical Role tonight, Campaign 3, enjoy. Yeah! I know that we'll, most of us will be watching either today or tomorrow. Are we going to watch <laughs> and just be in the Dungeon Select call? Are we going to be in level uh, select? Can do, yeah. Can do. wants to show up? Or like maybe, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see depending on who wants to like watch along and stuff. All right. All righty. Take care, y'all. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.